Hey guys, so I want to come here and make this really quick video. Um, I'm going to be talking about my natural hair, um, my locks, and then also tying that into um, Hebrew women falling in love with their natural roots, not only their, their heritage as far as genetics and spiritual um, roots as an Israelite, but um, also their natural hair, their natural roots. So I got this comment um, a few days ago on one of my videos, and it was a woman um, asking me about how many locks I had, and I told her I don't know. I never counted my locks. I tried to count it once before, um, then I lost count, and it just got real messy, so I said never mind. But I might go back to it, but I don't know for a fact, only because... Um, this is just like a very daunting tax to me and I'm just kind of like not up for the challenge at this moment, but we'll see. So she asked me to talk about my locks and my natural journey also, um, but then also tie in, you know, the importance of um, Hebrew women and, and, you know, how they are embracing more so now their natural hair um, and then how other cultures and other uh, people, nationalities, Gentiles, um, are profiting off of us not embracing that so to quickly get into it I don't want to make this video too long, but to quickly get into it I just want to give you guys a brief history of my natural hair journey um, First of all when I was like nine years old. I got my first perm um, I know actually I was younger than that probably I might have been like five my mom was doing like the box perms I think I had I used to get just for me all the time and then I started using PCJ when I was you know middle school early high school um, but I got my first perm when I was really young and I got my, I think I went to the salon the first time when I was nine. My sister, my older sister, she's three years older than me. She had um, Shirley Temple Curls and she got that done by the hairstylist. And I was like, oh, I want that. So, you know, my mom worked it out for me to be able to get that. I just wanted to look like my sister at the time. <laughs> but anyway, so I've been, I've been going to the hair salon since I was at least nine, 10 years old. Um, and then I carried that all the way out getting those Hawaiian silk, you know, silky, bone straight, sulfur, killing our hair perms. I was getting that from the time I was a little girl up until about time I was 22, 21, something like that. Because my last perm was in um, April 2009. And I remember that specifically because I had a shortcut then. And I had it cut short, you know, shaved in the back a little bit and a little curl on top like a mushroom on top it was real cute but I had that back then um, because I had a lot of breakage I kept having breakage and it was probably because the lady I was going to at one point she probably women would know this you know black women would know this um you only supposed to relax your roots well she was relaxing like all of my hair even the parts that were straight so it was over processing so it just was like breaking off it was the grace of the most high that I had any hair left on my head anyway so um, I was trying to um, go to this one particular stylist that I love to go to and uh, I was waiting for her I don't remember what the reason was but I was waiting for that for some some reason but anyway I was just kind of like growing it out whatever and so my sister was like well why don't you just go natural since you already kind of like are doing that anyway and it was already short so I was like okay cool I can just let it grow out a little bit more um you know and then just cut off the remaining straight ends and so that's what I did I never really cared about going natural beforehand, but um, when, when she said that then, I was like, okay, this is a good time to do it, and I just felt like this is what I wanted to do. So I did that. So that was in April. No, that was in May. Actually, no, no, I got my last perm in April, and then I was trying to schedule to make my next appointment, but for some reason, I I couldn't, I don't know if it was scheduling or something, but anyway, something was blocking. So it had been about a month or so that I went with just having my new girlfriend. That's a long time for people that ain't natural. So anyway, so I went from April 2009 to December 2009. I got micro braids um, during that time period. I wore that for a few months. I got a sew-in. I hated it, but I did wear that for like a month or two. I've only had weave in my hair twice outside of like braids. I've had a, like an actual sew-in in my hair twice or tracks twice and one was when I was growing my hair out the other time was before my sister's wedding um, but anyway so after all that process I finally got my hair cut in Atlanta December 2009 I think it was December 14th to be exact in 2009 did my big job and so I was natural um, you know loose loose hair natural whatever you want to call it, loose strand natural for a few years for about four years but I still had short hair like I had a big fro but four years of hair like this is almost five years of hair and of course it's gonna be different with locks because you do kind of retain a lot of hair 
but with loose natural you can still kind of get an idea of how long your hair should be like one with four years of new growth like natural hair it's like a lot of hair i still had a fro like this big so i was like why does my hair keep breaking off and so long story short after four and a half years of wearing it natural doing it myself twisting and you know all this other stuff i was doing so it just over manipulating overworking it was still breaking and then i went and pressed it out because i believe the lie that you um well, i don't say the lie but i was under the impression that you couldn't cut your ends unless you had your hair straight um, so anyway, I blew it out and the lady burned my hair. My hair was silky and lay, honey, but it, she burned it off and, and I mean, it was just like really bad. So after that point, I was just like, I need to do something about this. And so I said, I'm going to lock my hair. And um, it's funny because the guy that I was dating at that time, he was like, you know, why don't you lock it? And I was like, no, that's too permanent. Like, no. But um, a few months after that, I ended up locking it. So anyway, um... I went ahead and I started researching about having my hair locked and I just fell in love with it. And so then come January, fast forward to January um, 2014 is when I get my hair locked. I get, you know, I started on January 24th, 2014. And so this is where I've been. And so natural healthy hair starts from the inside out. You have to eat right, you have to drink a lot of water um, and eat like a lot of green leafy vegetables or vegetables and fruits, period. Things that help your health help you have a healthy inside but also help with your skin because your scalp is really where your healthy hair starts because all this is just dead once it cracks the skin of your scalp your scalp is you know is dead so anyway um so long story short here i am fast forward to where i am now i'm four and a half years locked gonna be five in january 2019 next year um and so i love it it's been the best thing for me um i washed my hair today and I have it down, but I'm probably, I know I'm going to put it up soon because I, I'm a I'm a neat freak. I do not like straight hair. That's like a pet peeve of mine. And for some reason, yes, locks, you do keep a lot of your hair in your lock, but I still shed little pieces of hair here and there. And I can't stand it. Like, I don't like to see that stuff on my floor. I'm always constantly sweeping or vacuuming or something like that. So I'm, I left it down so I could do this video because I felt this was a good time to do it. Um, but I know I'm going to tie it up soon. Um, anyway, and so I washed my hair today and I was going to braid it up and do like a slight retwist on it, but I decided to just keep it like this because I like the way it looks. It's very healthy. I like my locks being straight like this, no crinkle or nothing. Anyway, so that's the background on my, my, um, on my natural hair journey. Um, speaking on the importance, like tying that in with your Hebrew faith or your Hebrew, um, lifestyle culture or whatever for Israelite women. Um, you know, it's important for one in any African culture, hair has always been like bomb and always been something important for us. It's an expression of who we are as women, you know, it's artistic and creative and personality and Just all these great wonderful things you'll find that throughout history period whether you know israelite or not you know with african women you will find that like you know we just like to dress our hair up or whatever braid our hair and things like that so it's always been something important to us it's our glory as the scripture tells us and then also there was a point in time in history where the israelite women um you know they were rebellious and disobedient to the most high and his commandments and his way of living and so they the scripture says that they would um you know have their necks outstretched and have their jewelry on and the tinkling of their braces on their ankles looking for their lovers you know um and that could be an idolatry worship or even physical like actual man to lay with um and the most high was disgusted with that so he said i'm going to smite thee with baldness and so um when you look at that scripture then you look at how a lot of israelite women um and not just it's you know we are the only women on the planet really that has this issue where we would style our hair but for some reason we end up losing it you know even with other black women you know you don't really see that or African women whatever um, Israelite women we tend to have a struggle with our hair most of the time and so you know we have a lot of women that wear weaves and stuff like that and I'm not knocking or bagging anybody wants to wear a weave i'm not, you know you're you mature enough to make your decision yourself okay i don't i'm not i'm not interested in getting nobody's life and saying you know jumping on the throat about what decision they make about their hair um but honestly we shouldn't be wearing that fake stuff because we have our own hair and our hair is very beautiful our hair is is spiral just like the universe our hair and our our dna is selenium based 
and selenium can only be found in soil. So it just, everything about us just shows and proves how we were made in the most highest image, just like how the scripture says he had hair like wool. Um, this is very much like wool to me. It's very warm in the winter and it's very hot in the summer. Um, and um, everything about us reflects that we come from the earth. We come from this planet that the most high created us from and fashioned us from just like he said in the scriptures i don't come from a monkey now if you want to believe it that's you but i don't I didn't come from a monkey okay um anyway so our hair is very beautiful when it's taken care of and it's natural healthy say it's very beautiful so i don't believe we should be wearing these fake things and putting you know like wigs and lace fronts and all this glue and crap and stuff on i mean it's just it looks bad and it's very detrimental but if at the same time i believe it falls in line with the curses for disobedient as like women, those who are you know disobedient by choice, and those who don't even are not even aware that they're walking in disobedience, you know. Um, and it's important um, as we are reclaiming our heritage and rediscovering our heritage and all that to embrace as women our natural hair because it is our glory, it's our beauty. Um, and so there are a lot of cultures that make tons of money. You know, I think the I think the 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 hair care product. Um, with like uh, weaves and stuff like that. I think that's like a billion dollar industry or something like that. And it's typically the Koreans, the Asians. So, you know, side note, when you see the Asians confiscating or I don't want to say confiscating, but controlling and colonizing Africa, for me, it's it's shocking, you know, because it's Africa. I always looked at Africa as being like the motherland or whatever at one point. But now I know the scriptures, uh, uh, Galatians 4 and 26 says Jerusalem is the mother of us as Israelites. Um, you know, I was really proud of Africa at one point, and then I like, wow, y'all look like y'all kind of going down, letting any, anybody come in. But at the same time, it, it just shows, you know, where the Israelites are because it ain't nothing different. When we look at our neighborhoods in America where black people are, you'll find the black hair care supply owned by Koreans. You'll find any kind of Chinese or Japanese or whatever kind of takeout menu. So anyway, but they, those Asians, they tend to... Um, make a billion dollars off of us in hair and then also in nails i stopped getting my nails done gosh probably over two years ago only because i just didn't want to pay the money anymore and i was getting just a regular manicure with my nails twelve dollars is what i was paying i was going every week and i was just like addicted to it and then i was like i don't want to do this no more you know i was going to the indians or the asians sometimes getting my eyebrows and i just completely just got out of that i'm just in my natural state and i have my natural nails i have my natural eyebrow shape and form um i have my natural hair everything about me is natural nothing fake i don't even wear makeup or i never wore makeup i don't even wear lip gloss and stuff like that like i used to but anyway um it's important for us to embrace that because embracing our natural hair and who the most high and how the Most High created us and made us to be, it shows that you, you know, to me, it's like you, it shows that you love who you are. And there's no woman on the planet like us black women. You know, like there's no men on the planet like black men. There's no women on the planet, you know, and um, like us. So we should definitely embrace that and, and you know, em embrace that more and not put stringy hair on our head that doesn't, any everybody can tell it didn't come from our scalp. Um, this, in my opinion, is good hair. This is the good hair. Kinky, coily, curly, some may say nappy or, you know, whatever hair. This is good hair to me. So, um, anyway, um, I just want to talk on that really quickly. And also, not giving our money to the Gentiles. Take our money and put it back in ourselves so that we can have something for ourselves. We can build something for ourselves. As I tapped into our other, tapped into this in another video, you know, moving away to another person, another tribe or person's land. You know, if you feel led to do that, then do that. But it doesn't make sense to leave one foreigner's land to another foreigner's land, one captive land to another captive land, and you still don't have the freedom to, you know, to do what you want to do for yourself. You still don't have the the ability to to make laws for yourself because you're still going to be controlled um you don't have you still have to buy from other people you know it, it, you still have to do things based off of the other the gentilish way so anyway i i say that to say um you know stop putting money into these other people's markets and these other people's hands because that money is not going to come back around to you um put it in your hand invest it in things that actually matter you know you have hair you don't need to buy hair. You have hair. You know, you eat right. You eat properly. You take care of it. It's going to be gorgeous and beautiful on its own. I mean, this is as long as my hair's ever been. If you can see it, I think I'm at like bra strap left, mid back. So you have hair, you know. You don't have to pay somebody else to give you something that's fake or even worse, hair that's cut off of a dead person's head. Like, that's disgusting to me. But anyway, um, take that money and um, use it for something that's going to 
you know, better you, you, your people, your community, pay a homeschooler if you have children or pay to get yourself certified to teach your children in school or, you know, use that money for something, put it back in a, in a, in a, a black owned business. Somebody is teaching the commandments or teaching, you know, righteousness, something like that. So anyway, I hope I answered her question. If I didn't, let me know in the comment section <laughs> and I don't mind doing another one. Um, but you know, I just wanted to talk on, she wanted me to talk on the importance of reconnecting to our natural hair and our natural roots and, and not embracing other cultures that want us to embrace something that's unnatural to us. So, um, anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you all and I hope that answered your question. Um, and I'll see you all in the next one. Shalom. I believe in you and I believe in love.